Hey there! So today I'll show you a quick explanation of dynamic variables. This is not going to go any usage with protoflux or anything more con complex. This is just the basics of dynamic variables. So let's get right into it. So over here, we have a very simple snapper setup. I have a sphere, I have a box. If I move the sphere onto the box, it snaps to it. Now if an object snaps with a snapper, that also means that when it's not underneath the snapper, it is not parented to the snapper. And if it is on the snapper, it's parented underneath it. Now, if we go to the sphere parent here and click to attach component, and then go to data, dynamic, dynamic variable space. Now our snap target is actually a dynamic variable space. We'll call this one container because he contains all of the variables beneath it. So next, we'll actually need a variable. So we'll make a new slot here and call this var.color. Then we'll go to attach component, data, dynamic, value variable, because it's a value and we want to have the definition of the value specifically on the slot itself here, rather than referencing a different field to be the value. Then we'll set this to green. And there we go. Now we have the value green. However, it needs a name. So our variable name is going to be container. slash color. Now, what you could also do is you could simply type this instead of typing container slash color, you could just indirectly link it by calling it color. So what it would then do is it searches upwards, finds the first variable space, which is in our case container, and then it's just accessible as container slash color. Now, I generally recommend against doing this, especially if you have objects that you move around off of the hierarchy as we are doing here, because it just gets a little bit messy. Now, the one upside over hard typing it on every single variable is that if you want to in the future change the name of your variable space, it's a lot easier to just change the name of the variable space and not have to deal with the actual variables that are beneath it. So we'll do, we'll actually go and directly link this again to the container space. And next we'll go to our sphere. On our sphere, the first thing we'll do is we'll actually make an assets materials unlit material of type unlit material. Next, we'll assign that into the actual materials on the mesh renderer. So now we have a pure white sphere. After that, we'll actually go and make a new slot and call this color and then go to attach component, and again, go to data, dynamic, value, variable, driver. And we again want, want color X. Now, once we have this, we'll simply set this default value here to white. Now, a default value is the value that is used if the variable is not found. So if it has no idea where the variable is, it's going to use the default value, which is white. Next, we'll simply grab the tint color here, go back to color, and slot it into here. Then we'll grab the variable name over here and put it onto the variable name here. So now, if it finds the, the container slash color variable, it'll, it'll drive this color over here onto our tint color field. Otherwise, if it doesn't find it, it's going to just be white. So if I now grab this and put it back in the snapper, you'll see it turns green. White, green, white, green. Additionally, if I duplicate this box here and then open it up and change var.color here, 
to something like purple. If I put it in the first box, it's green. In the second box, it's purple. This is because every time it snaps to the box, it's beneath the snap slot, and our snap slot is the dynamic variable space. It goes default because when it's unsnapped like this, it's actually just beneath my spawn area. And my spawn area does not have the variable it's looking for. This is the most basic way to explain the concept of dynamic variables. It goes a little bit deeper once you get to stuff like flux and how to interact with it with like duplicated components to make a ton of references to stuff. But we'll leave it at this for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helps you in the future. If you liked it, like it. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the description and the comments below. Thumbflex, and I'll see you next video.